friends i am dr prashant sharma and you are watching medicos hub this is my third lecture on the interior of the base of the skull and in this lecture i am going to discuss the posterior cranial fossa it is the deepest and the largest among the three cranial fossa and it lodges the hind brain the cerebellum posteriorly and the pons verlin medulla anteriorly now first of all we'll discuss the boundaries of posterior cranial fossa the boundaries of posterior cranial fossa is basically formed by dorsum cell and the posterior border of petrous temporal bone this is the posterior border so this is the anterior boundary of the posterior cranial fossa posteriorly so anteriorly it is surrounded by dorsum cellae and the posterior border of petrous temporal bone posteriorly we can observe the squamous part of occipital bone and laterally that is on both sides we can observe it is mainly made up of the mastoid part of temporal bone and mastoid this one is the mastoid angle of parietal bone so this is the boundary of these are the boundaries of posterior cranial fossa now we will discuss the posterior cranial fossa under two heads one is the median area another one is the lateral area now median area is formed by median area is formed by this one that is clivus clivus is a slope between the dorsum cellae and the foramen magnum it is basically contributed by the posterior part of the body of sphenoid and the base occiput now posterior to the clivus is foramen magnum foramen magnum is having clivus on anterior side laterally by condylar area and posteriorly it is having the squamous part of the occipital bone now this is vermian fossa this is internal occipital crest and this we know that is internal occipital protuberance internal occipital protuberance is just opposite to the external occipital protuberance and we can observe the transverse sulcus on lateral sides of it so this is the median area now we will we'll discuss the lateral area in lateral area we can observe the superior border of petrous bone and later just in the median most part of the superior border of petrous bone we can observe internal auditory meatus internal auditory meatus or internal acoustic meatus is a bony canal which runs transversely and horizontally laterally transversely and laterally and that is having a perforated bony plate at its lateral end which is known as lamina cribrosa it is having lamina cribrosa at its lateral end which separates it from the internal ear the cranial nerve seventh the cranial nerve eighth and the labyrinthine vessels may pass through them they will exit through the, from the brain into the uh, internal ear and the, some parts of face so this is the uh, petrous part of the bone temporal uh, petrous part of the temporal bone now this is foramen uh, this is jugular foramen jugular foramen now jugular foramen and this this foramen this is the condylar part this is hypoglossal canal
hypoglossal in between the hypoglossal column and the jugular foramen there is a tubercle which is known as jugular tubercle so these mainly form the condylar area so this condylar area jugular foramen and the petrous part of temporal bone along with the occipital part of temporal bone form the lateral area now lateral wall of this posterior cranial fossa is basically formed by the mastoid part and the mastoid angle this mastoid angle is of parietal bone and mastoid part is of temporal bone now just near to the mastoid angle of the parietal bone uh, there is a sigmoid sulcus which runs downwardly and it ends at the jugular foramen so here will be the sigmoid sulcus another thing that can be observed in the petrous part is somewhere here that is subarcuate fossa so this is the posterior cranial fossa so hit the like button and share and subscribe our channel to get the latest updates and notifications